In this video, we're exploring at a local estate sale, which happens to have quite a few old cars and old motorcycles and car parts. So we're looking for treasure, hoping we can find a good deal. This was a four day estate sale. And usually with these types of things, you either go on the first day to try to find some treasure before everybody picks it over, or you go on the last day of the sale to try to make a deal on something. We decided to go on the last day and there was still quite a bit of stuff left Throughout the shop, you can see hope caps hanging on the wall, various car parts and tools and materials and supplies all over the place. Uh, all of those things were for sale. Uh, some of them were priced reasonably, some of them were not. But as we're walking around, it was the cars and the motorcycles that really got my attention. So we started outside and actually, as soon as we walked up, we heard a lady say that she had just sold all the cars. So we didn't have a chance to make a deal on any of those. Still wanted to check them out and show them to you guys. So the first thing we saw was a 1960 Edsel. Now Edsel was only produced for three years, 58, 59, and 60. And this guy actually had one of each. So these are some pretty cool cars. They're very peculiar. They have lots of cool features. And you know, it's kind of an offshoot from Ford Motor Company to do something sort of in the same lines as Mercury and Lincoln. In fact, Mercury, Edsel, and Lincoln all had the same basic type of engine. They all had different cubic inches, but it was all built off the same platform. So this 1960 is pretty cool. It's, it's pretty rusty underneath. You can see that the quarter panels rotted out on it, but it's still got a cool look to it. It's still got a lot of trim. The interior is mostly complete. I'm assuming it's got an engine in it. Can't really tell. Didn't want to look under the hood, um, but a pretty neat looking car that you could actually make a driver out of if you wanted to. And then making our way around, we see an early Ford Ranchero. I like these cars because they're based off of the Ford Falcon, which is a pretty small car. And these little trucks are just cool. And this one, you know, it's, it's a project, it's in primer. It's not fully complete, but it does have a lot of parts piled in the back of it. And then as we make our way around to another Edsel, this one's a 58 two-door hardtop. This one's mostly complete, but it is pretty rusty. Uh, under the hood here, you can see that there's some type of animal's nest, raccoon or possum or something has made a nest inside of here. Um, and then as we make our way around to the interior, you can see this very wild design that Edsel came out with in 1958. And it was unlike anything else. It had a really cool rotary type speedometer. All that stuff is still complete. The gauge cluster and all that's still in there. And then on the steering wheel, the coolest thing to me is in the horn button area on the steering wheel, that's actually your shifter. So it had a push button automatic shifter that was made into the steering column. It's a really neat design. And you can see that they've actually put another shifter in the floor on this car. So something must have malfunctioned there and they just put a extra shifter in there just to make it work. Moving inside, we've got a 1949 Buick. This is a really cool looking car. I can imagine this thing sitting a little bit lower, big, fresh, wide white walls on there you know, just get that eight cylinder engine running again, this could be a cool cruiser. And then sitting next to it is a 1959 Edsel four door. This is a pretty much complete car. Again, you could put some fresh tires on this thing, probably get it running over the weekend and be on the road again. Another cool car inside is a 1960 Cadillac, another four door, again, white walls lowered, hit the road. You know, there's not a whole lot to this car. I'd leave the primer spots, I'd leave it just like it is and just lower it down a little bit and cruise with it. Another interesting car in this collection is a 1978 AMC Pacer. And you don't see very many Pacers on the road anymore. You don't see them at cruise nights. You don't see them even in junkyards. They've just all gone away. So to see one that's mostly complete, this is pretty cool. The stuff that got my attention the most were these vintage British motorcycles. Three bikes, mostly complete, various stages of rustiness and crustiness, but very cool bike. So first one here is a vintage BSA. This is a Thunderbolt. So this is a two cylinder motorcycle. Uh, they had various models like the Lightning was a higher performance model. It had two carburetors. This one just has one, but this thing is pretty much complete. The engine was locked up, so that's not good. But the rest of this bike, you know, you could use it as a parts bike, or if you were really ambitious, you could probably go back through this engine and make it run again. But Cool looking piece. I love the gas tank treatment on this thing. Very, very cool. Sitting next to it is a Norton motorcycle, which is a pretty rare piece. You don't see many of these things around. This one didn't have any year listed on it either, but I looked around at some of the numbers and did a little bit of Googling and found that it was a 1969. 
It's a 750cc, uh, two cylinder, you know, this thing probably ran really good for the day. And, you know, it's been worked on. You can see that the tank has been painted. It's not perfect by any means, but it does look like a really solid start to a cool project. The third one in this lineup, and probably my favorite out of the three, is a 1972 Triumph Tiger. Now, this bike isn't worth a whole lot of money. They had it priced for $1,400, and the engine was free. You know, you could probably get this thing running with not a whole lot of work. But my favorite thing about it was it was kind of a mild custom from the 70s. So you see it's got a little bit of a high riser handlebar, not like eight hangers, but just a little higher than normal. And then it's got this big king and queen seat with velour inserts. And they've even wrapped the frame rail, which you can see right under the seat, they've wrapped that with some type of gold carpet. And uh, it's got a sissy bar on the back. You know, this is just a cool 70s custom. And, uh, you know, I can just see this one cleaned up a little bit, get some tires on it, get it to where it'll fire off and ride down the road. And it would just be a cool piece. But either way, I didn't make a deal on any of this stuff. It was all a little bit out of my comfort zone and a little bit out of my price range. And uh, obviously the cars had already gotten sold. So we went home empty handed, but we still had a good time. And you never know with these things. You might walk up on the deal of the day or you might go home empty handed. So we're still happy that we got to go check it out and want to show it to you guys. Hope you enjoyed it.